here with Sheep Hill Herbs. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video. Hope you're having a good day and like always I want to take a deep breath with you before we begin. Put your left hand on your heart, right hand on your lower abdomen and let's just take a deep breath and let it out. So what you can do is Take a deep breath, counting to four. Hold for four, let out for four. One more time. And just that clearing breath can reset you, change your mind frame, get you into a relaxed state. Deep breathing is very important. You want to breathe from your abdomen, not from your diaphragm. When we're nervous or stressed in fight or flight, we do short, shallow, quick breaths. So you want to breathe deep and low and get in the habit of doing that. So in today's video, I'm going to do um, a talk on herbs. I haven't done an herb talk kind of video in um, a number of videos so I wanted to get back to the roots of this channel which is herbs so before we get started please like subscribe hit the bell comment and check out my description down below I am going to be sharing from a book called the school of natural healing by dr. John R Christopher it is my go-to favorite herb book I will have it linked in my description down below. And this book is a collector's item. If you buy an older version, it can be upwards of $200. A newer print um, is still around 60 to 70, but I really recommend you get it while you can. Um, like I said, I'm gonna link it because the older herbal books I find are the most, um, I want to say the most reliable, the most authentic, my favorite for getting information. So in today's video, I'm going to share about herbs that destroy and expel worms. And they are called anthelmintics. So an herb ha is categorized by different categories. And there are many. And many plants fall into numerous action categories. So I'll just give you some other categories so you understand. There are absorbents. There are alternatives. There are analgesics, which is pain killing. I'm not going to describe all of them in this video. I'm just giving you some of the names. There's antacids. There are amenagogues, there are digestives, there are anti-arthritics, and the list goes on. There's a lot of different categories that you can put a plant under. So the word for herbs that can expel and destroy worms or parasites is anthelmintics, A-N-T-H-E-L-M-I-N-T-I-C-S. And I am looking at my notes here, so... Um, I hope you can bear with that. And a lot of the herbs in that category also are really good for the digestion. As well as being, some of them are female herbs and can be um, amenagogues, which bring on menstruation. So this category of plants, I do not recommend for a woman who is pregnant. So if you want to do a parasite cleanse, wait until you're finished being pregnant and nursing. Okay, so I'm going to be looking down at my notes and I'm going to share with you some of the herbs that I like, that I'm familiar with, that I use in this way. And um, there is a much longer list than the ones I'm sharing. So uh, the reason why I decided to make this video is because I have a lot of views uh, on my black walnut videos and black walnut people often ask me questions as to how much to take um, for doing a parasite cleanse. So black walnut is an is um, ant anthelmintic. I have trouble saying that word. It is for parasites. 
And I, I would say that you can start with black walnut and try black walnut first and see um, if you have results before mixing and doing like a combination of herbs. Mm -hmm. So um, this, this video might get lengthy because there are a lot of particulars and maybe before I go any further, I'm going to say this. I really recommend that you work with an herbalist. Hint, <laughs> hint, hint. Um, I share information on this channel and lots of herbalists share information, um, but it's, um, I guess it's more of like um, an introduction, like a very basic introduction. And the other comment or the other um, feedback that I get often from people is they go out on their own and they maybe search on Google and they look up something and then they go and buy some herb somewhere and they try something and it doesn't work. Well, that's because there is an art and a science to herbalism. Herbs are very popular right now and you can buy them anywhere, but I don't recommend doing that. That is why I have my link wall in my description down below. I recommend Mountain Rose Herbs for bulk herbs. I do have some things in my Etsy shop, like my black walnut tincture. And I also offer services where I work with you one-on-one, -on -one, um, doing like a consultation or an education kind of appointment. So herbs should be bought and be fresh and good quality. I would not just go to the grocery store. I would not just go to a CVS or a big chain store and buy herbs encapsulated in a bottle because they are often filled with ingredients that are fillers that make it cheaper. The best plants to use are the actual plants that you have um, procured from nature or purchased from an herbalist or a company that specializes in herbs because that is one of the main reasons when someone tries something it doesn't work. So I could go on and on and on about that, but let me just cut back to the topic at hand. So black walnut is um, an herb that you can use to expel worms or parasites. So typically when you do um, a parasite cleanse, you take the plant for three weeks and take a break for a week and then you start again. And every, every person is different. Every body is different. That is why I do suggest working with an herbalist because your situation might be, well, your situation is most definitely different than someone else's. And someone might need to take uh, these kinds of cleansing herbs for a long time and someone else might just do it uh, two rounds and they're fine. The other thing that I hear sometimes is that I, you know, I didn't notice a difference. Um, well, maybe you didn't have any parasites <laughs> or maybe they were very minimal and it just flushed out and you were good to go. So um, let me share with you some other uh, anthelmintic <laughs> herbs that expel and destroy worms or parasites. And uh, they are, and I'm going to look over, Cascara Sagrada. This is a bark. This is... Um, an herb that helps move the bowels. Cascara sagrada is not an aggressive laxative herb like senna, which is also in this category of anthelmintics. Cascara sagrada is a little bit more gentle, but it will move the bowels and often, or it goes hand in hand, constipation and parasites. So if you are um, someone who has constipation regularly and I would describe constipation as only moving the bowels even just once a day I, is described as constipation from um, my teaching from where I I learned my herbal studies so uh, cascara sagrada I often add it into bowel formulas that uh, are to move the bowels and at the same time work for uh, parasitics then we also have cloves. Cloves are very, very known for that. You can do, you can start adding clove to your foods, to your teas, uh, melon seeds. And there are a number of seeds that work this way. And uh, those are pumpkin seeds 
and the melon seeds and I'm not sure if I have another seed here B -b -b -um, watermelon seeds so I think that that when we're young you're told don't eat seeds don't eat seeds but seeds that's like one of the the mainstays of my diet so whenever I cut up a, a squash a pumpkin we save the seeds um, wash them put oil on them salt them put them in the oven for a little bit and eat them every day we have seeds of some sort so seeds are very good. Dulse, believe it or not, and dulse is a seaweed. And uh, Dr. Christopher always used it in his uh, vital herbs formulas for nutrition to add extra vitamins. It's a sea, sea vegetable, also helps um, when the thyroid is in need of natural iodine. I do not use dulse as an anti uh fomentic or anti-parasitic kind of herb. I use it more nutritive. So then we also have garden sage, hops, whorehound, horseradish, hyssop. So those herbs that I just mentioned, most of them are bitters. So oftentimes the bitter herbs are herbs that work this way we have marigold flowers, believe it or not. And marigold is a very uh, gentle herb. And it's an herb that I use for skin, uh, for sensitive skin in a number of my tea, uh, tea formulas. It is, it's funny when you look at the list, when I go over the list, some of the herbs are, are more of a, a strong herb that you wanna be careful when you're pregnant or careful for different people in different situations but marigold is usually a very gentle herb and that is again why i recommend that you work with an herbalist because you don't know all of these particulars mullen mullen is one of my favorite herbs a tall um jacob's staff plant that grows in the summertime with big leaves and has this big rod and little yellow flowers that is another herb that is a pretty mild and gentle herb very good for the respiratory system peach so either peach leaves or eating peaches pomegranate eating pomegranate seeds again seeds we have red mulberry bark eating red uh eating the mulberries um senna i mentioned and senna is an herb i don't use very often it's an herb i use if there is um i want to say pretty pretty strong constipation problem and that is maybe a few days or longer of not going to the bathroom um and senna is not an herb that you want to stay on whereas cascara sagrada is more mild you can take cascara sagrada in combination with other laxative herbs or bowel healing herbs for a long period of time senna is just short time to get the bowels moving if you have you know a real stuck problem <laughs> Turkey rhubarb and thyme. Thyme, um, thyme is in there because of the thymol, like clove with eugenol. It is the essential oil component that is antithemetic. Uh, turkey rhubarb is a milder laxative. And I'm going to end with wild carrot, which is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite special summertime herbs, which is um, from the Queen Anne's Lace. And then wormwood, which is the probably most common, commonly used herb for parasites, along with black walnut. And uh, black walnut can be taken in tincture form. I make it, it's on my Etsy shop, with alcohol base. And it doesn't taste too bad. <laughs> wormwood, however, is very, 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 very bitter. I never drink it as a tea, I, you could. Um, usually I use this in a capsule, so I encapsulate it, uh, with some other herbs, probably clove or, um, I've put it with sage and hops before mixing to make it, you know, a, a formula that would go along with the black walnut. So wrapping this up, <laughs> wanted to share on herbs that are good for killing um, worms and expelling them. And I hope I gave you like a good base information here. If you want to have like a specific, 
kind of like plan, I recommend that you contact me. And you can do that by going to my description down below and going over to my uh, website and messaging me through my contact page. Or you can go on to my about here on YouTube and get my email address and email me that way. So I don't just give out um, like directions or dosages if you don't have an appointment with me. So oftentimes I get questions like, how much should I take? And the thing is, there are particulars that need to be considered. And so I don't just give out, oh, you should take blah, blah, blah. You know, that is to me, the beauty of herbs or natural healing is that it's specific. It's, it can be specific and tailored and beautiful for each person. So it's not just, you know, go to the store, read the bottle. Oh, take two, you know, everybody takes two or tablets or whatever. So I don't give out dosages. Um, I try to teach here and I try to give general information so that you can then get more information and uh, find some more help. Okay, so signs or symptoms that you might want to do and a, a parasite cleanse. Ah, I'm stuck here with these words, these big words. Um, constipation. If you've had a history of constipation, if you eat a very heavy diet, lots of starches, dairy, um, mucus forming foods, if you eat a lot of meat, uh, undercooked meat or meat that's not been handled properly, meat that is ugh, from the horrible meat houses and not just like farm raised animals, but even those animals, of course, can have uh, worms or parasites. Uh, if you live, if you have pets, if you live around a lot of animals, I mean, parasites are everywhere. And typically our immune systems can handle lots and lots that comes comes and goes through our bodies, but the vessel has to be clean. You have to have um, working orders. So if you have any of those situations, if you work with pets, if you um, are around animals all the time, then that might be, um, it might be smart to take a cleanse and do some parasite cleansing or um, bowel cleansing a couple times a year, a couple times a year. Fat, and I could go on and on about these other topics. So I want to stay more specific to what I'm referring to in this video. So um, those would be reasons to want to or try to do a cleanse. Um, and then I never, when I work with someone one one, like I never just say like, oh, here's this herb, goodbye. You know, like we we talk about what else you have um, as far as lifestyle, whether it's diet is always key, um, what you drink, what you eat, <laughs> and other aspects because the herbs will work better when it is holistic. It's not just like go to the store, buy a pill, take the pill and your symptoms go away. It's a holistic thing. So I just feel more um, mindful, responsible, and uh, supportive when I don't share information that is um, not complete enough, I guess. So working together, I can give you more complete information. Anyway, <laughs> Some people might comment. They'll say, you didn't tell me enough in this video. You didn't give me what I wanted to know. Sorry, you have to contact me. But thank you so much for coming to this channel, for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about plants and herbs that are good for expelling and destroying worms. And leave a comment. Down below.